So when I was 12 years old, I had this dream that lasted for three nights. Now, the first night, my family and I moved into this modern house, and it was like a 70s modern house. And I still remember what the house looked like interior-wise. And when you walked through the doors, to the right was this glass staircase that led up to this loft that overlooked the kitchen and the family room. Now, up in this loft was this grass patch. It was just in the middle of the loft. And um, when I think about this dream, I think about this grass patch. And um, I go up there right away, and my family is downstairs, and I lay down in the grass patch with my dog, Bucky. And we're just laying there, and then I fall asleep, and I wake up in real life. And I wake up, and I go on with my day. Then I come home, and I fall back to sleep again, and I wake up in the grass patch. This is the second night, and I wake up in the grass patch, and I look around, and my dog is next to me. And I get up, and I go downstairs, and I remember sitting around this long wooden table with my, the rest of my family members. And my dad says, quick, we need to hide. The Chinese are attacking us. So we go upstairs to the loft, and we hide in the grass patch. And the grass is long, and it's just keeping us safe. And so we're laying there, and there's bombs going off around us, and it's not hitting us because we're in the grass patch. And then the roof comes off of the house, and there's this huge Chinese jet. It's like an airplane, but there's a Chinese symbol at the bottom of it. And they're dropping bombs, and there's gunshots going around us. And we're not getting hit because we're safe in the grass patch. So the, the roof goes back up, and the Chinese leave. And I ask my mom, are they gone? And my mom says, yes, they're gone. Uh, uh, and then my dad gets up and he says, I need to go to King Supers to get groceries. I, rem I remember that part. He just says, I need to go to King Supers to get groceries. So he leaves and um, my mom, my two brothers, and my dog and I fall asleep in the grass patch. And I wake up in real life and I, I'm, I'm laying in bed and I'm, I'm thinking about the first night and the second night. And I'm kind of recalling that this is the second night in a row where I've had this dream. So I go and tell my mom and she's like, oh, it's normal like to like have the same dreams um, two nights in a row. So I'm like, okay. So I go on with my day, and uh, I come home, and I fall back to sleep. And this is the third night, and I wake up in the grass patch again. And this time, my mom and my two brothers and my dog are in the grass patch with me. And I ask my mom if the Chinese are still attacking us. And she says no. And then I ask if Dad's still at King Supers, and she says yes. So, <clears throat> so we go downstairs, and this is the part where I remember most vividly. We go out to the front porch, and there's this huge brick wall next to these doors. And my mom lines up, then my two brothers, and then me. And we're, we're standing up against the brick wall waiting for my dad to come home. And the Chinese come around in golf carts and, like, surround our house, and they have guns. And, like, I, like, look at my mom, and she's like, it's going to be okay. And then they all start shooting at my mom, then my brothers. And then when it comes to me, I look at the general, and then he has this big bazooka. And, like, he shoots me. And I get shot, and right when I get shot, my whole dream goes black, and my body becomes tense, and, like, I hear this ringing noise, and, like, I'm, like, shaking, and, like, I'm numb, and I, I like, wake up, and I'm in sleep paralysis. If you ever had sleep paralysis, it's not fun. Like, it's really not. So I'm, like, laying there, and I'm, like, did I just get shot in real life? So ever since that, getting shot, I've, I haven't had that dream since. Um, now some of you are, like, that's weird. Um, cool. Yeah, I, I totally agree. But ever since that dream, I've been really passionate about dreams. And it led me to my main question on, is it just not going to, why do we forget about our dreams? <laughs> um, and I thought by sharing that dream with you guys, it shows that we can remember a dream from six or seven years ago, but forget the one we had last night. Why? So that's what I'm trying to answer. And besides researching, um, I read two books, The Secret Knowledge of Dreams and uh, Different Symbols When You Dream. And they were really good, and I got a lot out of that. But I also kept a dream journal. Um, for, the past month, for the past month and a half, I've been keeping track of my dreams. So here, the answer to my main question, why do we forget about our dreams? Scientifically, there is no accurate answer. Scientists don't even know why we sleep at night or why... Uh, we dream when our bodies are asleep, and let alone why we forget about our dreams. Now, throughout my dream journal, I've noticed similar patterns, and there was a week where I just could not remember my dreams, and it was over Thanksgiving break. And I would wake up every morning, and I'd write down my dreams. I cannot, I, I don't remember. And at the end of the week, I'm like looking over. I'm like, why is it just this week? But then I remembered my sleeping schedule over Thanksgiving break, 
and it was trash. <laughs> so I had this theory and thought, and I was like, okay, uh, does the amount of sleep you have per night affect your dreams and let alone the memory of you having them? So each night I began to record what time I fell asleep. And in the end, I realized that the earlier I fell asleep, the more I would remember my dreams and the more vividly I would write them down. So there's, there's days on here where it's just four and five pages of just that one dream. Uh, so that brings me to my first theory. Does the amount of sleep you have a night affect your dreams and let alone the memory of you having them? So everyone dreams. And if you say, I don't dream, well, you're wrong because, like, you're lying to yourself because everyone dreams through the process of REM or REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. And this is the fourth and final stage of the sleep cycle. Uh, before you begin to sleep in REM, you go through NREM, which is non-rapid eye movement, and there's three stages. This is when your pulse slows down, your muscles relax, and your brain produces delta brain waves, which basically slows everything down. And this is before you dream. When you get to REM, this is where your brain waves speed up to the alpha wavelength of 8 to 13 hertz, just like it does when you're awake and active. And this is where your eyes begin to flash around, your heart rate increases, and your breathing speeds up. So this is when you begin to dream. The, my next theory is we like to forget things. In general, we are great at forgetting the non-essentials in life. Um, besides forgetting dreams, we forget about a lot of things in life. For example, you don't remember the thoughts you had or the feelings you had when you were eating cereal this morning or brushing your teeth, unlike the breakup you had two years ago or the car accident you were in. Uh, we tend to recall the things that matter to us most and the things that really have the most impact on us and have an emotional sin significance on us. And all those feelings and thoughts go through the DLPFC, a brain region that facilitates memory, and this is the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Um, and this is the uh, brain region that facilitates memory and feelings. Um, so the theory to this is the more likely... Uh, the more impressive your dream is or thought is, the more likely you are to remember um, your dream or that thought. Um, so in the end of all this, uh, I was researching and I was like, yeah, I can, I can sit up here and talk to you guys for 10 minutes about why we forget about our dreams and tell you guys all the different theories. But I wanted to get something out of this and I wanted you guys to get something out of this too when you leave. So I do really recommend you guys doing a dream journal, even if it's for a week or two weeks. Because not only did I see patterns in my dreams, but I, I began to see fears. And here's what I mean. Um, I had this reoccurring dream where um, I couldn't run. Like, it was impossible for me to run because my legs were heavy. And there was this dream where I was fighting this ninja. And I couldn't punch him. Every time I punched him, I, would just, I was weak. So it showed me a fear of not being physically active and not being, like, strong, like, just weak and floppy. I also had this reoccurring dream where I my teeth would fall out of my mouth. Like, I would just pull it out, and they weren't my baby teeth. And I would, like, bite down, and they'd just fall out. Um, so what you guys can get out of this is, if, even if you do it for a week, you can begin to see patterns in your dreams, and you can begin to really see anything through dreams. And um, a dream journal is awesome. Um, so that's all I have. Do I have to pop, press it?